Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new here and welcome to episode number seven of the build your own budget planner using a notebook series. Is it If this is the first time that you are watching one of these videos, I will leave a playlist down below so you can check out some of the other videos I've created already. But basically I am breaking down some of the pages that I'd like to have in my budget notebook. Um, and I'm also going to be showing you how I budget in here as well. So if you'd like to see any of those previous videos, go ahead and just check out the playlist. As for last week's episode, I did do a budget recap for April as well as show you two different ways that I tracked our expenses. But for today's video, I'm going to be showing you a breakdown of our savings goals, our long-term savings, and how we track our sinking funds. Also, before I forget, this notebook... This is from Amazon. This is a little bit bigger than your normal or regular notebooks that you might find at Dollar Tree, like this one. You see how it's a little bit wider? So I was able to fit a little bit more in here, you guys will see. Um, so I think something that you can get as well, I think five star is pretty wide. Is that what it's called? I think that's what it's called. Five star. And I think some of the Staples brands, they also have wider notebooks. So if you're thinking about building a tracker in here and you have a lot of savings like I do, um, it might be helpful to have like a wider notebook. Starting with the savings goals breakdown. So I have a total of, um, I highlighted the long-term ones in green. So five, that's more long-term savings. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight sinking funds. And if you're new to sinking funds, a sinking fund is basically a savings that money that you set aside for a future expense. As far as my savings goes or the layout of this goes, I have all my categories up here. Like I said, long-term is highlighted in green. Purple is my short-term slash sinking funds. I have all of our savings goals over here. Monthly contribution, bi-weekly contribution, weekly contribution, I save by date, which not all of them have it. And I also have a starting balance as of the beginning of this year. So as far as our savings goals go, I think it's super important to be very specific with what your savings goals amounts are, because when you are sitting down and doing your budget, it'll be easier to allocate some of your money um, towards those savings goals to make sure you are going to achieve them. So uh, for emergency funds, I set us with a goal of 9000 for the year. Um, my husband's Roth IRA, I really wanted to max it out. Um, so we put 6 k because that's how much you, that's the limit or the contribution limit for the year. Our Hawaii vacation, a goal is 6000 Uh Vehicles, 500 And this one is ongoing. Um, fun and events, 2500 That one is an ongoing goal as well because that's something that we'd like to have in there for like birthdays, wedding events, and things that just pop up that we don't want to disrupt our regular budget for and that we don't want to miss out on. And travel is for mainly all the trips that we make up to visit my mom, like the road trips and stuff. And then many little getaway vacays here and there throughout the year. So this one is an ongoing goal as well. So that's set at $2,000. Christmas, $1,500. We did increase that from our usual $1,000 because we did go over last year. So we kind of gave ourselves a little bit more room here with the $1,500. And that one I'd like to have saved by November because we typically start to shop around November, sometimes end of October. And then my husband's goal is at $800. That's ongoing. My goal is $500 and that is ongoing. And for this, this is just a personal allowance for things we'd like throughout the year, like if we want to get new shoes, clothes, if I want to buy a planner because those things are not cheap. Uh, we don't just stuff that we don't buy all the time that we need to give ourselves an allowance for every single week because we typically don't spend like a lot on ourselves every paycheck. So we like to have a chunk saved in case we need to dip into that for other bigger things. For kids, it's at 500 and this is something that we're still playing around with because man, activities and sports are kind of expensive and we do want to get them into monthly programs as well. So this amount here is something that we're still kind of playing around with. So 500 for now. And I originally set that goal by July. And honestly, for school supplies, they don't really need much. Our school is really great. The, PT the PTA is pretty awesome and they pretty much provide all of the school supplies. They even bring us they even send us home with some basic supplies and they have some there for them. So we really don't need to buy anything other than a backpack, which they're going to pretty much reuse it. So 
this amount is really for any of the school clothes that they might need that they've outgrown and activities and stuff. So yeah, so that is what the goal is for their kids. And then 529 is for the college savings. We have that set to 2400 for this year. We of course are going to be increasing that later on. My oldest is eight and my, or no, nine. My youngest is five. So we still have quite a few years before they head to college. Our house down payment is at 15K. Um, and I want that due by December. And this one is more of a long-term goal because we don't really expect to buy a house anytime soon, but we did just want to start saving for it. And then my Roth IRA, which I've only contributed once from my business this year, um, my goal is to save 3K, which is half of the max contribution amount. Um, but yeah, I won't get into that right now. Um, but I did also put a monthly breakdown by weekly and weekly. I decided to put the weekly in there for a lot of the bigger savings goals that we have just to see how much it would be weekly because looking at it monthly just looks so overwhelming. So taking a look at it weekly, if we have any money left over from our variable uh, budget category, we can possibly start, you know, contributing a little bit more for those goals. So that's why I put a weekly contribution on there. And then I did put a starting balance here, like I said. And so you're going to see the starting balance in my other trackers. So, so let's go ahead and take a look at the long-term savings tracker. So this is broken down by months over here and then all of my categories here. And then I have it broken down even further by um, saved slash spent and our what our current balance is because I'd always like to know what the amount that we have in our savings because the more you know about your finances and how much you really have, the more that you can plan ahead for how much left that you need to save or something um, for those goals. So this one is this amount right here. So it says plus 1.61. That's for the interest that we accrue or receive in our high yield savings account, which I have through Capital One. And we haven't spent, thankfully, anything from our emergency fund, but I have a feeling that we might soon because we got an unexpected medical bill that I thought we were done paying for. We're going to call our insurance and see if we can get that medical bill. It's $1,500. So we're going to see what our insurance company can do about that. And my husband's Roth IRA has already been maxed out. Uh, what else on here? House down payment. We, as you guys can see, we haven't really contributed much, but yeah. So important thing on here is for me to see what our current balance is always is so that we know if we need to buckle down in our budget and make sure we are contributing to these savings goals. So that is how our long-term savings looks like. So the question that I get a lot of is how do you track sinking funds? Because with the sinking fund, it's not just you're saving it and you're not ever going to spend it. You are going to be spending your sinking funds because that's what it's there for. You're saving money a little bit of a time, a little bit at a time, and then you're going to use it. So this is how I have it broken down. I'm just going to go ahead and fold this over because you don't need to see this side because this is from September to December. So sinking funds. I have a total of, I think I said eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so I have eight. And this is broken down by months. And just like the long term, it's also broken down by amount that we saved, the interest that we accumulate, um, the amount that we've spent, and then what our current balances are. And I do have the starting balance over here so that I had a um, number to be going off of as I do the running balance. Let's start with what have I used so far. So we've used our Hawaii fund. So here you can see I spent it. I spent $540 and then in March we saved $380 and then that's pretty much how it goes. So we also spent money in our travel fund. This, I ended up changing the name in our digital sinking funds, which I have through Capital One. It really is a travel slash vacation sinking fund, but to make it a little bit more specific, uh, once we knew we were going to go to Legoland for sure, I changed the name to Legoland. So a lot of our expenses um, for travel had to do with our Legoland trip. And so here, our starting balance was 148 In January, we saved 259 plus the interest and then got our and our balance was 407 And then down here in February, we did spend $146. And then our updated balance is 261 So 
One of the things that I've been trying to get in the habit of is making sure that we track what we spent in the sinking fund as well, because we need to make sure we replenish it or if needed to accomplish our goal, we need to make sure we save more or budget um, budget ahead to make sure that we're saving more. And then because here in March, uh, we knew that we had to pay for certain big expenses like our hotel. So in March, we put in $1,580 um, and then we ended up spending um, down here $1,805. And now in her travel fund, we're left with $37.13 which I believe our original ongoing goal is 2000 for travel. Um, but right now that's really not the priority. The priority is going back to our Hawaii trip because right now we're at $2,000. We did pay for a couple things um, in May, uh, but our original goal is $6,000 and that was to take care of flights, um, not flights, our flights we used our credit for. Um, our hotel, so our hotel and car rental. And then we still need to go ahead and plan for purchasing our activities ahead of time. And there's two big ones um, that's gonna eat up our vacation budget. Um, and then we still wanna save money for allowance and shopping and food and stuff. So yeah, so I am gonna be going through and kind of checking to see how much we still need to save between now and September, because that's when our trip is for Hawaii. So anyway, that is pretty much how I track our sinking funds. Again, that's one of the questions I get all the time um, is how do I track it? And this is, it looks like a crazy mess, but once you set it up, it's pretty easy to track it. So as you close out your budget, you can just go in here and put down the amount that you saved for the month. And then if you spent any money and then just have an updated balance, because like I said, the more that you're aware of what you have, in your savings, the better you can plan for it in the future. So yeah, anyways, so that is pretty much it for this video. I really hope that this was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below how many sinking funds you have or um, if you even have any sinking funds and what you're saving for. I'd really, really like to know. And as always, you guys, thank you so much for watching, especially for watching till the end. And I will talk to you in my next video. Have a good one, guys.